what's up folks, welcome back to another 3D Hangout. My name is Noah Ruiz, I am a designer here at Adafruit, and joining me every week is Mr. Pedro, my brother. Good morning everybody, I'm Pedro's Creative Tech here at Adafruit, and every week we're here to share 3D printed projects featuring electronics from Adafruit. That's right, this is sure we combine 3D printing, DIY electronics, other things as well, we combine them to make inspirational projects, hopefully for a few folks. Hello everybody, hanging out in the Discord chat room, want to give a shout out to everybody in just a couple moments, but if you'd like to join us live during the show, you can join our Discord server. The invite code for that is adafru.it slash Adrian has an alternate one. What's the alternate one? What are we talking about? Discord.gg <laughs> slash Adafruit. It's right above there in our little purple header. We also have, also have um, our handles for the socials. I'm Ekin and Pedro's Video Pixel. Much better name, Pedro, than Ekin. So hello everybody in the chat room. Big shout outs to everybody joining us today. We have Mr. Certainly Bruce. We have Liz Blitz City DIY. Hello. We have Ken. We have Andy Calloway and other folks as well. As you join us, we can shout you out. But I just want to say hello to the folks that are in there right now. We're also hanging out in the Twitch, Facebook, Periscope, and uh, LinkedIn chats as well. Good morning, everybody hanging out there. We have Rolls Six I and a couple others hanging out on Facebook and the Twitch. Good morning, good evening, afternoon, and night. Everybody hanging out all around the world. Let's yeah. go ahead and jump into this week's housekeeping. Okay, so 100 days of masking is still going on, and that ties in well with the freebies. So Adafruit's been giving out masks with every order, uh, and we're still doing it this week. I think we're getting closer to the end of this, but hey, check it out. For orders that are a dollar more, you get that black surgical mask. For orders that are $99 or more, you get the black surgical mask and a Permaproto half-size breadboard. For orders that are $149 or more, you get the Permaproto the surgical mask and a randomly chosen STEMI QT breakout. If you have an account with Adafruit, we'll make sure that you don't get the same one twice. For orders that are $200 or more, you get the randomly chosen STEMI QT board, Permaproto half-size breadboard, the black surgical mask, and UPS ground shipping for continental US only. And for orders that are $2.99 or more, you get the free UPS ground shipping, STEMI QT breakout, the Permaproto half size breadboard, the black surgical mask, and a circuit playground express. Ooh. How many freebies can I get? All of them. Read the, check out the site for uh, more details on, on those those awesome goodies. And Which is at adafruit.com slash free for all of the updated freebies. Yeah, we appreciate your orders. They allow us to do these daily freebies. Every day, all day long. That's good. I like that one. All right, all right, here we go. Circuit Python meetings happen every Monday at 2 p.m. Eastern time. It's a great opportunity to check in with the devs and the community. Circuit Python meetings happening in the Discord server in the Circuit Python chat room. So you can check that out every Monday at 2 p.m., with the exception of some holidays and things that will happen on the following day. You can also check this out in your favorite podcast um, you know, as an archive, or you can check out the YouTube channel for the archive there as well. Newsletters. Every week, there is a new, new newsletter. This one is focused on products. Go to adafruit.com slash newsletter for that one. There's some daily newsletters as well. The name is Adafruit Daily, and the website is adafruitdaily.com. There's lots of categories to choose from to subscribe to, such as Python on hardware, 3D printing, IoT monthly. There's many more, so check them out. I think I said 3D printing, but yeah. There's, there's more, and you can check those out at adafruitdaily.com. Let me catch my breath. All right, are we ready to, to start the... Yeah, let's go ahead and start this week's All right. project. This week's project is a bit of a work in progress, but we have most of it ready for folks to check out. This is a 32 by 32 RGB display, and it's being powered by the Feather NRF50. Wait, sorry, it's being powered by the Feather RP2040. This is that new ra that new chip from the Raspberry Pi Foundation, and uh, to make this work so that it's a bit of a plug and play situation. We have an RGB matrix feather wing. This guy here has all the kind of ports and connectors for plugging directly into uh, the style of displays, which tend to have a 75 hub connector, which is this thing over here. So what we've done is we kind of 
redesigned the frame and the grid diffuser for the display because it does come with a stock frame and a stock grid, but it's super easy to take that apart and kind of make this. So what makes this kind of possible is this awesome material called black LED acrylic. So I just took it apart, super easy to take apart. This is the frame that's 3D printed. And there are these little feet here that are attached with these screws and hex nuts on the inside. Kind of a good way to get um, a really nice secured fit. If you don't uh, want to use heat set insert, you could always create like a polygon shape and press fit hex nuts in there. That way they don't pop out. So that's what I did for this one. Grid, two feet. I mean, not a grid, uh, a cover and these two feet there. Great. So let's talk about the acrylic. This is black LED acrylic. We stock this stuff in the Adafruit shop. It's opaque, um, not super transparent, but it is designed to really make LEDs and lights pop. So let's, uh, let's look at the display. Here's a display with the 3D printed grid. And when you put this over, you can see here how nice it looks. Um, thing about the you know, diffusion is as you get further away from your light source, your light source you kind of get a little bit more blur. So the further you're away, the more kind of evenly diffusion you get. Now you're just looking at kind of like a disco party here. But pretty cool optics here. Yeah. So why don't we take a look? Oh yeah, so let me keep kind of taking this part. So that's the black LED acrylic. We stock this stuff. We love this stuff so much. And uh, you can cut this uh, using a scoring tool. And we have a video on, uh, on our YouTube channel that shows a little bit of the process of cutting this with the scoring tool and a paper template. So that's the black of the acrylic. Let's talk about the grid. So this grid is 3D printed and it kind of just press fits into this frame here that has the doubler feathering secured to these, um, these little standoffs there. So let me take the grid out. It just kind of rests over the LED. So I'm gonna kind of take this off here like that. So this is all 3D printed and this is the bare PCB, right? Cool, nice and thin, over a thousand LEDs here. Wonderful. So here's the grid. You're gonna need a, a, a 3D printer with a bed that's at least 200 by 200 millimeters. Um, actually, I think like 210 by 210. Um, yeah, so uh, this, this prints here. Uh, it's, it's, just, it's just all perimeters, there's no infill, it's all perimeters, and it's like that thick. So like, I don't know, 10 or 5 millimeters thick. Uh, yeah, so here's the grid, right? This grid is what really makes um, this effect work because when you lay it on top of the PCB, it's actually like encapsulating the LEDs so that um, none of the lights are leaking into each other. So that's kind of how this effect is working. So let's take a look at what this looks like with no grid and some black LED over it. So similar effect, but because the LEDs themselves are, the, the diodes are inside of a circular sort of lens, you get these circles, right? You get these dots, which is still a very cool effect if you wanna go with like this light bright type effect. So you don't need the grid, but the grid is what makes it a square, right? Yeah. Wonderful. All right, so I got another display and I'd like to kind of show that display and its stock um, stuff here. So here's the same display and this is the grid that comes with its stock and not much really to this grid. It, the reason why it, it doesn't quite work um, is because it's it kind of gets flush with the uh, with the LEDs, so you can't quite. I haven't turned this on, but let's see if I can just do this then. Since this is already on, let's go ahead and kind of put this diffuser back on the kind of stock one, just to show what it looks like. Um, you know, it just kind of makes it a little bit more diffused, I suppose. Like the circles look a little bit more. Uh, more bigger, maybe. But yeah, you can see here, it's kind of hard to get that effect with this uh, thing, so that's why I, I chose to take it apart, which is super easy to do. It's got a couple of screws that you'll need to take out, but relatively easy to do. There's no glue or anything that holds the, 
the PCB to the stock grid or the stock frame. Um, so that's cool. And it's easy to take apart. Maybe just hang on to those screws and you take them off. Um, yeah. So let's see. So that's this piece. I do want to show that this this is running. So this is using CircuitPython, right? And the library uh, to to get these matrices working is called the Matrix Portal Library. And the Matrix Portal Library has support for uh, different hardware, namely the M0 and the M4, but also coming soon the NRF52840 and the RP2040. I got a PR that's in the, that's sort of a work in progress, so that's why uh, our learn guide is still a work in progress, but that is under development, and uh, hopefully we can get that out uh, within this week. But having said that, um, let's go ahead and, and plug in another board. Again, this is the RP2040, that Raspberry Pi chip, but I also have it set up a little bit differently over here. There goes the mouse. So this is a uh, the same har mostly the same hardware, but a little bit of a different configuration. So the the RGB matrix feathering can be set up with male header pins or female header pins. In this case, it's uh, using the female header pins. Let's see if I can brighten this up a bit. Yeah, Peter's doing that too. Thank you. Yeah, so. These have female headers here, and in this sort of configuration, the IDC header right, is on the bottom of the PCB, and that allows you to, s to connect it directly into that, s that hub 75 port. So if you want to make it this way, um, here's one note to uh, see that little notch there on the silk screen. You want to make sure that that's lined up with the notch here, because uh, otherwise it's not really keyed. Um, so you want to make sure that it gets in there. But anyway, that's this sort of configuration. That's the RGB matrix feather wing, and this is a Feather M4. I can't get it to focus, but believe me, that is a Feather M4. And it's because it has female headers right on there, you can just plug this in on the top there. So no need for an IDC cable like I have here. But this is pretty much the same kind of hardware, right? And then to power it, um, I'll just kind of take out this. So how are you powering this? I have a beefy 5 volt, 10 amp power supply. Uh, that way, if I want to light up all 1,000 pixels white, you can do that. And uh, so that's this power supply. And then this little thing is just a little switch that gets added to the barrel jack there. It's for ease of use. So I'm going to plug this in through micro USB. So. Uh, so it starts powering on, and then I'll give it that extra power because it will need it. So uh, it's running the same library. So it's cool that the library has uh, some handlers there for, uh, for, for detecting uh, the hardware, whether it's a M0, M4, or RP2040. Um, so it's running the same library in the same code, a slightly different hardware, right? Yeah. Um, just a good comment from Bruce saying that he really likes the LED projects. They are visually engaging for the whole family. They sure are. And um, we'll jump into a learn guide from John Park um, that, that really walks through um, this code, the library, and creating um, these sprite sheet animations. Yeah. I'm just trying to figure out what's another kind of thing here. You notice here this power cable here? This, this power cable like comes with all of these displays. Um, but I've kind of tweaked it slightly. It's, it's, um, it's, it's slightly more simplified, right? I'll show you the original one because I have it over there. But uh, the RGB matrix feathering has these screw block terminals, and that's what the, these little prongs connect into. And you just kind of screw that in there. Uh, and then this just clicks in to, uh, to this piece here, which has the just power and ground, right? So that's how the power and ground is connecting uh, to the feather wing. And then uh, here is what the kind of default cable looks like. It has a double-headed, kind of double-headed snake here. Um, so all I've done is I just cut these wires here and then just uh, splice it into just one of these connectors. 
Uh, this is nice if you want to have two connect, you know, if you want to connect two, if you want to power and connect two displays, you can daisy chain them together with this cable. And it comes with the display. Another cable that the displays come with is this IDC cable, which is what I'm using um, for, for this particular setup here. Because I like using the, f uh, the doubler feather wing because I feel like it's more mechanically stable when I'm plugging things into the display in the back there. So that's why I kind of have it set up here in the doubler. But if, you, if you'd like, you can set it up this way too. So you have to make that decision on your own. Um, but the frame should fit uh, this thing too. I'm just going to, it's just that it's, you know, screwed to it. So that's why I have this kind of fixed there. Real quick, while we're still kind of on the subject of the cabling, we had a question yeah. by Squid JPEG asking where you got the barrel connector with the power switch. I linked that in the, all the chats. Yeah, it's a real great. quick, really good way to turn these on and off without having to stress the uh, power, the jack there, the barrel jack mm -hmm. by plugging it in and out. Yeah. And we have these in a couple of different configurations. You also have a USB one as well. Oh, look so at that one. For USB. It's a little bit different. Nice little chunky on and off rocker switch. Oh, actually this one's smaller. It is, yes. It's like thinner. But super chunky and um, I don't know, it definitely should work with all the different power uh, supplies out there. So yeah, very, very nice switch. I, I really like this as well. Um, sweet. So let's uh, put this back together, shall we? So how do we how would we do it? Uh, first, I would you know secure the PCB, <laughs> the doubler to this thing with the with the headers. Plug all the stuff in. So this goes in like this into the frame first. The grid fits over here. I like to have the surface uh, that was printed on the print bed surface facing out. I just feel like that gives it a better look. And then this just clicks into the frame. You see how it's flush. And then the frame has this kind of a ledge here, so it prevents the PCB from going all the way down in. So that's a little design thing there. So that's this piece. Let's set this aside and work on the cover. So as you have the cover, it's your, whether you want these feet or not, I like them because it's less likely to tip over. Uh, you want to grab your black LED acrylic, that side out, shiny side facing up like that. That just clicks in, um, reflections, and then you want to be careful inserting uh, your grid and your cover into the uh, the your grid your grid your just your frame. <laughs> they all just slide in like that. There's no screws uh, to keep that together because it's so thick. Uh, it just kind of stays like that, and you can see uh, it's this thin. <laughs> cool. All right, so there we go. Any questions while I power this guy on? Let's see. <clears throat> Just a oh, general curiosity thing. on why there are two power pins that uh, go into one. I think it's so you could split the power for where tiling with more than one grid. Yeah, which particular? Um, this one. Oh, this one, why it has a... Uh, why this one had two? Yeah, I, I, I barely briefly talked about it. Yeah, in case you want to connect two displays and through one power source, that's why the cable comes with two. It expects you to connect multiple together. So that's why it's set up this way. But uh, I've cut it and spliced it and simplified it and reduced the wiring so it's a little less, you know, um, all over the place. <laughs> Otherwise, you have to <laughs> coil it and it looks like a mess. And that's why I recommend uh, yeah, and then Don maybe cutting K. it and splicing it down. Yeesh. Don K has a question about the Matrix Portal board. If you're using yeah. that instead of the feathering, what are the library differences that are required? It is the exact same library. That's what's amazing about wow. this. The library has uh, kind of detectors inside of it that says, hey, if this is a Metro board, run these pins. If this is an NRF52840 board, run these, et cetera, et cetera, for all the boards. So great job. Shout out to Melissa for handling that and Lamar too for like saying, hey, let's make this matrix portal library work with all the CircuitPython boards and all the CircuitPython uh, accessories. Very forward thinking. Yeah. With uh, portal base being able to support so many. Yeah, a lot of those um, libraries that La Melissa works on become these like, mm -hmm. these libraries that have all these extra um, board supports and smarts, yeah. So we're like pulling things out. I think um, generalizing it, I think, what is it called, the portal? 
Portal Base. Portal Base <clears throat> Library. Very, very cool stuff. Um, yeah, so hopefully that answers the question. <laughs> and then real quick, Jasper Henson on YouTube is asking about Featherwing having level shifters, or do you have to drive the display using 3.3 volt signals? Yeah, that's why you want to get the, uh, the, the, the RGB matrix Featherwing. It has all the power regulation stuff already for you. Um, yeah. So uh, that's, that's, that's the way to do it. Very specific for running matrix displays. Yeah. Hence the name. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, we needed an easier way to power this and connect it. So Lamar's solution was to create the RGB matrix Featherwing. And originally before the Feather, she made one for the Arduino footprints. So she has a, well, she, well it's more of a matrix. I mean, a, a metro, that's what we call our Arduino Uno si uh, format. But we have an RGB matrix shield, I guess is what you would call it. Yeah, shield. You can do it, little feather. I know you can do it. I'll be running into a power issue with my USB hub. Any other questions? Will I power cycle this guy on? Let's see. Uh, Richard is asking if it is possible to use multiple 32 by 32 LED matrices or a 64 by 32 LED matrix. Oops, sorry about I that, have folks. seen, uh, <laughs> if you mean, if you're able to mix and match the sizes, I believe uh, that you are able to. You just have to edit what the code mm -hmm. um, says for the uh, matrix size. I have unfortunately killed our second cam <laughs> by a... Uh, Whoops. Yeah, I have too many devices plugged in, I suppose. So, I'm not sure how to fix that in Wirecast. <laughs> um, but, uh, we'll get something going here. Let's see what we can do. Oh, it's frozen. <laughs> yeah, 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 because uh, I'm using the USB hub and it, it, it just drew too much power. So y'all want to be careful. I wanted to load the code file, um, but yeah, maybe be careful. I just have a lot of things plugged into my USB hub. So maybe when you're uh, developing your circuit Python code, uh, don't have, you know, a hundred things plugged in <laughs> to your, uh, to one com port. We still have audio though, right? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, let's see if I can troubleshoot this. Somehow, I'm gonna try to change the the like the. Oh no, that's not good. Troubleshooting uh, camera feed live is very difficult. Ooh. I might crash the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> Errors with no text. Yeah, Too many LEDs. <laughs> Hello. Let's do a uh, something really drastic here. Would be to just disconnect the. The, the USB and re plug it in. Let's see if it comes in as a as a new thing here. Hello. Yeah, you can still hear can it. Can you see me, camera? There it is. Yay. Hello. It's party parrot's back for partying. <laughs> Current joke. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, so I hope y'all like it. You know, you can check out the, uh, we have the STLs available, also the original CAD files. So if you want to do some fun stuff there, check it out. It's on Thingiverse. I have a link in the description of all those videos. You can check out that uh, the STLs are ready to print. Hopefully they fit. <clears throat> and then um, I'll, let's jump into JP's Learn Guide. Um, right over here. You know. This one shows you how to set up all these sprite animations yeah so uh, you want to search for um, LED matrix display or pixel art and animation this guide really walks you through how you can create uh, the sprite sheets and um, it even walks through using uh, some software uh, called a sprite uh, to create uh, a ser to, to combine like a sequence of images and turn it into this vertical or horizontal strip um, like this, where there's a guy walking, and then John walks you through the techniques of like, because he's an anime, he's, he is an animator um, on the, the, the techniques and principles of animation, 
and he also has a little tutorial here on how to use a sprite, which I have to reference because like I was new to the software too, but very, very good. Beats Photoshop for oh, sure to, yeah. to merge all this. It's almost like a script. There's probably ways to script it as well. Not as um, elegant as the way they were able to do it since it is primarily focused on, on a building bitmap, yeah. the sprite animation seat. But seat. yeah, bitmap supports uh, really nice. And this here is the, the code that I'm using on this project. The only thing I modified here was I added the after, when you're setting up the display here, it says matrix, it's line 19. Uh, after bit depth, I put a comma and I, and I say with 32. Otherwise, this is default thinking it's a 64 by 32. So the artwork gets shifts. <clears throat> this is uh, uh, on a question that Richard is asking on the YouTube about the possibility of using multiple uh, 32 by 32 or 64 by 32 LED matrixes. This is where you would define. Yeah, and there's, uh, I haven't done it myself, but there's also a guide that talks about that, and I'll show you. But one thing I want to talk about, look, download project bundle is here now. This wasn't here yesterday, right? Ooh. So that's cool. So if you <coughs> download this project bundle, if you click on that button, it's going to download the code plus the libraries and any dependencies. So check that out. It's a fairly new um, project bundler. <clears throat> Let me find it so I can link it to everybody to test out. This grabs all of the libraries and dependencies that you'll need for every project, so you yeah. don't have to go hunting down every one of those. Yeah, it just makes it one less pretty big step. Mm -hmm. uh, which particular link did you want to share? Uh, the one where Lamar is uh, previewing it and a little bit more inspiring. Uh, explanation of how it's actually yeah, working. Yeah, was that on her Dusk of Lady Ada stream? Lady Ada, yeah. yeah. There was a blog post as well, which I cannot find. Let me see Project really quickly. Bundler. And, J and JP talked about it too on uh, on his mm -hmm. show. Brand new. Yeah. Brand uh, new. Try it out. I think Might be broken. Let us know, you know. Um, but yeah, the Project Bundler. Okay. And yeah. There's another question. Where was I? And then this guide here, RGB LED matrices with circuit Python by Jeff Epler, has an advanced section here. It says advanced multiple panels and walks through. Um, there it is. It walks through Canada's colony. It's got uh, some visuals here, some images that shows you how you can have four of these together to make a video wall. And it just walks you through all the different. Um, kind of things you need to change. So like the bit depth changes from four to two. And here's some, uh, some code, some demo code for chaining and tiling uh, using the matrix portal. But uh, again, you could probably use you know, the RGB matrix feather wing or the shield or what have you. There's some extra code here. And there's some nice visual graphics. It tells you here are kind of what the coordinates are like. Yeah. And uh, let me pop that into this is Cordia. Right there. OK, cool. It gets pretty, lots of depth in the RGB matrix world. Quite different from our NeoPixel displays. <clears throat> One comment from, oh, where is it? It sounds really cool on the project they want to do with the matrix. Oh, where was it? <clears throat> Uh, one note about like the sprite sheets. Um, some of these I can't share. Like, you know, we got copyrighted artwork from folks, so I can't share these. But we do have some that JP put together, and maybe I'll make some if I have some time. I'd love to see a, a Blinka like slithering her head. If you want that, you could check out Liz's uh, Blinka jump game. Let's see, uh, Michael Corey is saying that he wants to build a cheaper better UV meter for his car stereo. Oh, mm. So that's going to be cool. You can definitely use one of these smaller uh, matrix displays for that. Yeah, and my ongoing adventures. So I feel like I've kind of gone. Done every so size. the first one was this little guy, which is the 8x8 NeoPixel. Still one of my favorites because it's portable. It's just one feather and uh, super easy three wires. And enough room on the back to add a microphone for sound reactive. Oh, you can add all sorts of great stuff. I'd love to see an accelerometer, some sort of you know, accelerometer-based game. That'd be super dope. And it has an on-off switch. You can turn it off because it is a portable little display. Yeah? Black LED acrylic as well. I mean, what else would you use? So then I went from 8x8. You double that, and you get 16x16. 16 16. That's this guy here. 
and it's you know not too far off from the same size as the 32. Um, but yeah, this one uses uh, the prop maker feather wing and an M4 feather uh, so that it can power all um, all of the pixels because these are NeoPixels, not not the RGB LEDs that are on the RGB matrix. I am looking for a battery. I'm afraid to connect. Uh, Let's try it, shall we? I know I said don't do this, but I'm I can grab a battery. Say as I do. Ah, it's still going. This one, um, I don't quite have bitmaps. I don't think we have bitmaps running yet on the the Pixel Buff library. So this is the LED animation library for Circuit Python. So a little bit different, right? Yeah. So 16 by 16, 32 by 32, 8 by 8. There's the whole family. Quite different, though. Yeah. <clears throat> now I found the My webcam is going all on that, so. I found the uh, Learn System Project Bundler, Great, aka yeah. Bundlefly, and I am linking this as the blog post on a little bit more further in depth explanation how it's actually working. You just feel the rainbows radiating off and just. And then uh, Mr. Certainly is saying that there's a stream sale humble bundle, which includes Aspirate for 20 bucks. Oh, heck yeah, yeah I get that. That's oh, and you can also get, you software. can compile it yourself. All and... circuit Python, all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and then lots of thanks to... Uh, Thank y'all for tuning in. Uh, Richard, who's saying that they, uh, wait, now was it? Somebody had just gotten all of the um, the materials needed to build this and got it last night. Excellent. Let's run through those materials again because uh, I got links. So here's the the feather wing. Well, Zachary, Zachary Simpson. Thank you so much. Here is the learn guide. Which one? No, I'm just looking at the parts. Yeah. Ah. So yeah, the feather wing. Make sure you get that. Here's the 32 by 32. Again, this is a very specific one. It's the six millimeter pitch version. That's what the grid is designed for. We do have a 32 by 32 in a different pitch configuration where it's tighter. Those, unfortunately, I didn't design uh, this stuff for those. Um, so yeah, maybe in the future, but not now. <laughs> and then uh, here's the feather. Sign up. We're out of stock right now, but sign up if you want to pick this up. But if you just want to get it now, get the M4. It's a little bit more expensive, but it's still a great one. You can do the M4 feather. Um, I recommend the M4 over the M0 just because you're going to be able to, to do more. It's got more RAM. But yeah, it's kind of double the price, isn't it? Yeah. But uh, hey, that's the, you know, the cost of the chips and stuff. And I'm sure more of the RP 2040s yeah. will show up soon. I hope so, yeah, because we had to use them on what, the Itsy Bitsy board or something? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so those, those, and don't forget, we have black LED acrylic in stock. A 12 by 12 sheet is um, plenty for this project. You'll have some extra excess, so you can use those pieces for a smaller display or a different project. Um, it comes shipped nice and um, protected, not scratched and all this. And uh, yeah, we can mill it, you can cut it on your bandsaw, or you can score it like we have. And we're getting a nice collection of projects now that use this stuff. Freaking awesome acrylic, I love this stuff. And then, uh, yeah, the files are there on a Thingiverse. I also have the 16 by 16 on Thingiverse because we didn't quite do a learn guide on this one. The 8x8 is indeed a learn guide, but the 16 by 16 didn't get to be a learn guide, so you'll have to make do with just some photos here of like the assembly. But uh, yeah, yeah, so there's that one. Cool, I think we are through with this one. We'll check back in, check back in next week where we'll have our learn guide for this release, but you can get the CAD files now and some of the parts are, most of the parts are in stock. Awesome. Cool. All right, that is this week's project. We're gonna jump into uh, we got half an hour, so we're good. Pedro's been prototyping some stuff. All right, so you already mentioned a lot of chips being used. We're 
Spiraling using them between the QT Pi RP2040 and the Itsy Bitsy RP2040. And I realized that I didn't actually make any of these Lego compatible mounts for the Itsy Bitsy. So I took my um, good jab at designing something that would hold onto them. There are no standoffs on these. So we're using these nice little clips to hold the very edge of these so you still have access to all those pins or if you have a header on there on the top closer there we are you'll be able to still utilize all those pins and the way this works is that it slides in oh, to those that. slots right there can you show me the bottom I, this is my first time seeing this board so i can yeah so the bottom of the itsy bitsy rp 2040 nice and flush yeah. oh. Closer. And it slides right into these little Lego compatible mounts. It goes in like that and it does not come out cool. unless you slide it, forcefully slide it out. Yeah. Have these uh, nice walls all around so it'll keep it in there. And of course the studs or if you want to attach these to the back of a Lego plate, you'll have the, what are they called? Studs? No. Tubes? Tubes? Studs? Pins? I forget the name. <laughs> But these uh, should work on any Lego compatible or the um, the off-brand Lego ones. Cool. I got a kind of a side question. This is the Itsy Bitsy. Last week's project used an Itsy Bitsy NRF 52840. Would this fit the Terrico? Yes, it does. I didn't bring his body, but I tested it out. There are some differences between the M4 Itsy Bitsy and the M0 and the M. Uh, the RP2040 Itsy Bitsy. It's just a tiny bit wider. It's like 0.2 millimeters or something. Wow. Um, so Which is enough to not fit in some, yeah. in some cases. <laughs> exactly. Okay. So this will fit the M4, the NRF52840, Itsy Bitsy, and the RP2040. And just a slight modification yeah. that you would need to do if you want to use the M4. And with, uh, with that, look at this, folks. This is in stock currently. Ooh. $10 board. Nice. Uh, Lots of GPIO. A ton. It's basically a feather minus the um, LiPo charging. Mm -hmm. Although you can add header. that on there. You could with the, uh, the LiPo backpack. Mm -hmm. You can add USB charging. Um, cool. It's a micro B connector, which I find interesting that it's not USB C. Yeah, you're going to get like the wires that have all of the different adapters on there <laughs> until we get to the all USB world. But yeah. there is. Uh, I'll put this on uh, Thingiverse. So Wonderful. Yeah, folks are nice little way picking to them up. Slide that in. And, I, and then in addition to that, we were just talking about the Cutie Pie as well. That is different <laughs> from the uh, the Atmel version. That's great. So uh, the red one is the RP2040. Good color choice to yep. go with the Raspberry Pi. So same type of deal, except that you have these corners that are hugging on to the board itself. Yeah. Let me zoom in there for you. There you go. So one of the differences that we had to do is if we take this out, you can see the differences in the bottoms. Oh God. Oh, They're nice and tight. Ah. Don't break your nails. <laughs> so on the bottom of this guy, you can see the, uh, the uh, RP2040 chip. And then- So you go macro? Mama. You no, can go fine. macro. <laughs> okay. So the quite a differentiation from the uh, Atmel version see that you have to solder on SPI flash if you want to have more storage for more programs. Uh, so we had to have this little, these little, um, what are these called? These little elevators are just yeah. gonna ele keep the board up. Mm -hmm. Specifically around the, uh, the, the spy chip. The yeah. spy chip so it wouldn't, uh, you know, sort of rock around one inside the enclosure. Mm -hmm. uh, not really needed for this one. So the height point? and the elevators are removed or ele elevators yeah. are removed from that one. So it is a little bit more slimmer nice. and sized to fit the RP2040. Cool. You have your little cutouts for your Stemma connection as well as your USB-C uh, port right there. Yeah. And, cool. it go. and then they go onto either the inside of the uh, Lego base plate or right inside the tubes like that. Yeah, it's good they can do either or. You can make a nice little circuit with uh, without having to use a breadboard. Or yeah, just this is your breadboard. Board. And uh, yeah. with Stemma QT, you can connect some sensors mm -hmm. and create a really nice, yeah, just have simple one on project. Here for uh, display. 
This is the, uh, what is it, the ST8? SHT31. So the temperature sensor of sorts. Yeah. So I'll put all of these on Thingiverse so you guys can have access to all these. Yeah. But great, just uh, great expansion great of all of the Lego holders. There's a ton for like the Feather and all of the different sized um, Stemma QT sensors. Right on. So that's my prototype. Wonderful. All right. Uh, we got a quick shop talk um, for folks that like the Raspberry Pi and you're looking for a fun case, VHS, cassette tape style case, but snap fits open. I got my reels that kind of popped out, but you can print out these reels that kind of snap fit into this or you can glue it to the cover. And then this is a no screw, uh, no support um, case for the Raspberry Pi 4 Model B. Pretty simple. It's got this nice um, thing at the bottom here to take out the, S, the micro SD card, which is kind of neat. Pop that in. You got this nice indentation here for the ports. So my, uh, USB-C, your two mini HDMI or micro HDMI, and then your audio thing. And then the cover um, has a little slot here for the headers and then these cool stylistic uh, holes for a tape reel, a <laughs> 3D printed tape reel. So check that one out. Really simple case. Um, really festive. Like, is it festive? I don't know. It looks very themed. People like it. Yeah, people like it, so check it out. It's on our Thingiverse, Adafruit's Thingiverse page. And uh, we may, we'll probably do a video on it at some point. Uh, yeah, that's not it. Y'all yeah, can get to there, just Adafruit. And <laughs> no, thanks. Uh, Squid.jpg is. is saying that he literally just got a 3D printer yesterday, and these little Lego mounts will be the first thing to print. Oh, that's yeah, great. Perfect for testing out your tolerances, and it's such a quick print. I, I think love it takes that. 10 minutes to print. 10 uh, minutes. These. And you're ready to, yeah, those are great prints, these little snap bits. All right, cool. So you can check out that. And then, um, yep, Liz is saying that the case is perfect if you're using the, mo the Pi as a media uh, device. Yeah, for sure. Shout out, Liz. And then Hugo likes the extra spacing for the SD card reader. Yeah, I really like that too. That was my favorite piece of it. It really makes it so you can like oh. not mistakenly get the, the SD card. Now Ouch. Liz is saying that you could also that there's also room to fit a small heat sink on there. Yeah, that was really cool to, to, to hear. Yeah, so it does get hot, and uh, oh, having yeah. a heat sink on there is definitely a thing you want to do. So check it out. <laughs> you can then print it course, in your favorite, you know, glittery filament. Call back. Uh, from Bruce saying, be kind, rewind. Yeah, right, be kind, rewind, that's <laughs> great. At some point, maybe we'll do like a real, real reels, you know, where they're actually mm -hmm. moving. Anyway, cool, so check that out, that's Shop Talk. We're mm -hmm. gonna jump into Community Makes. We got two Timelapse Tuesday videos and a dozen or more Community Makes, so we're gonna try to do them all. We have about 15 minutes or so left in the show, so let's start off with last week's Kaleido I'm going to say Kaleido Cycle. Yes. This is called the Kaleido Cycle. I've never seen this, but everybody loved these. It is I... a print in place by Enrique, who put this up as a free download on Thingiverse. It's one it of is just mind bending. It's one of those really cool fidget toys. For sure. With they... print in place hinges. It's so cool. Yeah, no support. Yeah. They're just playing with it here. Yeah, it's so uh, when you're waiting for a video to render or something to upload or... It's like a stress ball, but you know. Yeah, sit there and just all day. Oh. So I'm using the purple glitter filament here. And yeah, you can see where the uh, hinges for that is. Oh. I think I used a uh, negative 0.1 horizontal expansion just to make sure that none of these pieces fuse together. And that was pretty much it. Yeah, horizontal expansion. That is a oh, sorry, yeah, bit of a expansion. slot. Yeah, there's a bit of a. Uh, is it particular to just Cura, or do you think, think other folks so. use it? Yeah, it's other names. Yeah, um, it's basically a way to like add a little bit of or shrink. Yeah, you can shrink your models a little bit. Like in Cura, it'll look for surfaces that are touching and just add little bits of tolerance gaps, whether you want to make it tighter or loose. Mm -hmm. And again, that's horizontal compensation. Yes, and you then just Hugo was saying, uh, this is what you play with while you wait for your next print to finish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, you can get this print from Thingiverse. It looks great. Thanks, Enrique, for sharing this one. 
Very, very great uh, print and a good one to test your tolerances. Looks like he printed on his Prusa. Uh, one Wonderful. of the things, uh, the mm -hmm. next one, I totally forgot to link. I'll try to maybe link it next week. A little bit too late now. Easter is already over. This is cool. I though. dig these prints that have the filament, like these channels to put in a filament. Yeah, this so this is nice filament. Product. This is just a, a, a one, one seven five diameter filament. Look, Pedro just popped it out. Mm -hmm. And that's a great technique. I've seen vases mm -hmm. that use this technique yeah. where you slide in your colored filament in through the grooves. Such this was a great little a Easter cool egg. cool way to yeah. do multicolored film or multicolored prints yeah. uh, in this nice decorative way. This is yeah. so awesome. Think about candy canes. Think about mm -hmm. um, other fun festive treats. Um, like a fried egg. <laughs> <laughs> I had to mention Liz's fried egg. <laughs> Because I'm thinking about, hey, that yeah. was an egg. This uh -huh. is like pre-fried egg. Right. You got a little hole in here for like candies or something. Uh, it'd be nice to split, split this in half mm. with some uh, snap fit together parts. Yeah. That'd be cool. That'd be cool. So nice, excellent way to do uh, multicolor uh, projects there. Yeah. This week's prod, or this week's uh, Time Lapse Tuesday, Tuesday time lapse is this. Uh, it's a turtle. Nice, yeah, it's a sweet lines. little turtle that doubles as a phone holder. Yeah. Look at uh, this print, though. Did I'm, it place hinges? I'm, it's, it's a great day when your time lapse uh, doesn't have string, right? Because, yeah. What can you say about the time lapses with string? Um, so I'm going to press. I didn't have to use any horizontal compensation yes. on this one. All of the Hinges are very loose, so excellent job on getting all the tolerances right in modeling for that. You can see here the head moves up and down. Yeah. So you can see where the hinge for that is on the back there. Phenomenal detail. As well as the arms and legs. That's so cool. And here's a little part where you can add a phone. Uh, it doesn't work with a phone with a case on it, but it uh, works. Uh, Pretty nice. Uh, I didn't show that you can have like different angles with it too. So you can have his uh, head or his facing arms down. up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can uh, have He's different had a angles. a long day. Oh. <laughs> He's facing down. He's doing his push ups. He just <laughs> laid this massive egg. What do you mean? <laughs> he, he, she, he. Um, so um, yeah. the, it's the metallic rainbow color. So it starts off like as a yellow or brown, yellow on the bottom, and then uh, ends up with a yeah, sweet film purple on top. Cool. So this is a design um, on Colts 3D. On Colts 3D, and I'm looking for the design. I think it's you scroll down. There he is. This is by Ken Do Fuji. Yeah. Hello. Check him out on Instagram as well. Ken Do Fuji. Awesome. This is a free free download as well. Very very fun. Um, Super cute. cute. You didn't scale that. it? Are there different no, scaling? No. There's no scaling that I did for this. There was nothing that uh, that I had to edit. And of course it has that uh, Super Mario aesthetic look. It looks like one of the turtles from the game. For sure, yeah. There's a little power uh, ah, thing. That's how great. Cool. These photos are fantastic. Make your little scene. So cute. Yeah, super duper cute. So check that one out. Flexi Turtle by Ken Du Fuji. Awesome. Thank you for sharing with us. All right, our internet is struggling, but we will try to get to the rest of the show. All right, the next part is more community makes. So we got a collection of community makes from folks. So the first one, I, uh, you know, this, this one, one is, is so from cool. Little Gem on Twitter. And uh, she does cosplay and she created uh, the animatronic wings that we put together, redesigned in collaboration with Aaron St. Blaine. So she's got her prototype going. And then in the next one, uh, this one shows something that I didn't get to show. Uh, heavy wings. These are dragon wings. And they, they flutter. And that looks amazing. They look quite heavy. Right. <laughs> like the, 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 the weight of the wings feel mm -hmm. Shows quite the heavy. the tail, too. The animatronic yeah. tail in the back. Yeah. It looks fantastic. I love those wings. Uh, this cool. is actually the route that we were going to go yeah. originally doing bat wings. <laughs> right. Dragon wings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or dragon Super wings. cute. And then also the tail as well. I'm not sure if it's connected to the uh, the servo feathering, but the servo feathering has up to eight servos that you can control. So if you want to have ears, um, we saw, you know, because it was more aimed towards like fairies and now it's 
dragon mm -hmm. bats. So that's great. So shout out to uh, it's a little gem for sharing that. It's uh, fantastic. Yeah. All right. We the next a, one. We got to do the tail next. Yeah. Or update tail. our tail. Right. Project. I think that was the the idea is to to have the ears and the tail mm -hmm. with the wings. So next one is cool. some students doing some brain craft uh, projects. Yeah. So. Uh, Braincraft, like you said, Microsoft, Luby AI, very cool. TensorFlow projects, students. There's an orange. Awesome. <laughs> very cool to see. Uh, so shout out to Girls Into Coding for sharing this. Oh, cool. Uh, and I can see the Star Trek uh, case in the background there, that other orange case. Oh, yeah. For the Pi Portal. Be, yeah. <laughs> I like the oh, theme cool. of the orange case and the orange yeah. orange. And then <laughs> a bit of an orange pen, pen orange. Oh, cool. This is a great machine learning project. Like, definitely check that one out if you want to get your kids interested in it. Sweet. Next up, we got another one. This is uh, the Pi Girl, one of the Pi Girls. We've done a few, don't know which one, sorry. Maybe it was the Pocket one. Yeah, Pi Girl Pocket by uh, Mark. Great game. Yeah, that looks great. We need to get ours back up and running and have uh, Gavin play <laughs> the original Sonic. He would love it. Just huh? so we can go through how frustrating it is to get through a level. <laughs> I remember showing him maybe two years ago. We turned it on and it, he's like, is it on? I'm like, yeah, it takes oh, a minute to, to power boot. on. It's yeah. Linux. All right, here's another one. This is from um, uh, Meline. Uh, this is a, a brick head. I, I'm going to call him a brick head. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, Emmett. Yeah. This is this is a really personal project to me because like this is like some circuit Python code that I wrote. Um, I normally don't write code, but I was able to write this one, and it's uh, a testament to beginners that don't write code can write circuit Python code for sure. Uh, so this is a a brick head, and you three D print it, no supports. It's got a circuit pl uh, circuit playground and a stem of speaker, I think maybe. Oh, I see a speaker. Yeah, up here. maybe not a stem of speaker, just a regular speaker. And um, it lights up, Looks and like it a uh, amp uses circuit be. python. I so thought like it made a it little. Oh wait, no. Yeah, it is they a stem speaker. Yeah. Oh, he took it out or something. Uh, no. it, yeah, that's cool. And um, yeah, you can print this out in, uh, you know, cut transistor. Uh, yeah, you can print it in transistor, so it shows up nice and yellow. Cool. And it's super easy to modify the code because it's circuit python. So thank you, um, Milling, for posting that up. That is great to see. You got another one here from Dan. Uh, Dan posted this. Um, his make of the Guardian Sword from uh, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. What's fun teaching about this, so this is really cool, looks great. You can, you can, it's all circuit Python as well. Um, 3D printed sword. And then somebody oh, commented on his thing saying like, here's, here's my inspired build. Inspired me to make a little one. Yeah. This is a So there's Mac Dan and Cracker. then Matt, or Mac, Mac uh, Kreger. He's like, I made a little one and I love the little one. I, like it's so cute. Yeah. <laughs> I want to make one too. This would be great for Gavin. So the settings that he's using here is uh, just 75% uh, smaller. Just barely fit on the printer. Wow. wow, cool. But it's super cool to see that, uh, that it's scalable, man. Right. So you print the full I, blade in one piece. I didn't think it would work. <laughs> you got it, man. You don't need oh, cool. a belt printer. Just make a small knife. <laughs> Gord Guardian uh, blade. Anyway, it's the one for Terry. Very, very fun. I like how that community make like spawned the, the one right after mm -hmm. it. Like These two kind of go hand in hand. Very cool. We have two more. Bear with us. <laughs> Liz posted her make of, of the VHS, Yay. so that looks really great. I like how she labels hers 2 gig, so you know. That's a good idea. Yeah. And she did a very <laughs> special technique here where she printed uh, the rails first in white, waited a couple layers, mm. and then swapped it out so you get that multicolor effect. And definitely yeah. check out uh, Liz's latest video, too, on uh, fried, eggs. fried eggs, so you <laughs> can, you can uh, create a... It's a really good like test print because mm -hmm. it's like changing it's the great color colors, for yeah. it's not just that but like it's great for bread adhesion like just all oh, bed adhesion yeah. so that's really good um yeah and it's got magnets too so check out fried eggs <laughs> and i'm showing this is great all right uh that's wait we got one more oh this, this the 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 cyber deck um so uh make lively posted their make of the cyber deck and i didn't know that you could flip around the cyber deck because it's symmetric Normally it's supposed to be on the other side, but hey, you can have it on, on the on the right side? On the left side? Whatever. <laughs> it's, uh, it's symmetrical. You can do it however you want. Uh, but it's cool to see a different thing on there. This is a Pyramoni um, hat of some sort, I think. Y'all know. You can tell me. What is this? 
I like the display here. This is cool. It'd be cool to make some sort of bracket that attaches. Pedro, you thought about that as well. You want to put like a bracket here mm -hmm. to attach this display. Very cool. Uh, and great to see uh, different uh, ways to, to mount this thing. So yeah, Cyberdeck plate. And the Cyberdeck is in stock, right? Mm. Right now? Let's Perhaps, see. maybe? Don't quote me. Sign up. <laughs> Cyberdeck. The bonnet is in stock. Okay. Everybody's getting the hat version. RP40 for your thoughts? RP2040 for your thoughts? It's like Penny for your thoughts. And anyway, that is all the community makes we have. Thank you, everybody, for sharing their stuff. Um, we really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, here's, uh, hey, there's the, uh, the fried eggs video. Check that out. Thanks, Bruce, for throwing that up there. Yeah. The one time that you want your eggs to stick. Yes, so many great puns. <laughs> yeah, people scramble for it. Yeah, right. Oh, we got some more votes here. Uh, Susan Lively is uh, requesting brackets for the screen for the uh, cyber deck. Yeah, we're gonna do that at some point for sure. We need to make it so it's like all together and contained. Great. Well, that's excellent. What other I think Fun. that's it. Checking out the Over easy. rest of the notes here. <laughs> she said people are scrambling for it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, man. It's super fun. I think the next one is to do bacon or something. Mm -hmm. Where you, you print it like a squiggly, mm -hmm. right? You print the squiggle and it prints up. And then yeah, you can, and so then you, you get can, all of the different colors right, of the bacon. You can, you can swap the different <laughs> the bacon rainbow. And red and salmon. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, um, tonight we hope to see you on Show and Tell. Me and Pedro hosted last week. This week we're just chilling out and um, showing off what we showed off already. Um, but it'd be great to, sh to see everybody there. We'll be there. We invite you to be there. You can uh, do so by checking out um, at 7.20ish. Uh, hang out in the live broadcast chat room in Discord and uh, PT will drop in the StreamYard link. Just have your microphone muted before you come on. That's about it. All stuff's fair game. Pedro, your, your spiel is on, retro tech. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everything that you want to show off that you're working on. It could be your kid's project, science fair project. Uh, lots of retro tech is commonly shown on there. Nice little nostalgia mm -hmm. last week. Um, also, of course, it doesn't have to be 3D printing electronics. It could be sewing, wearables. Any of that cool stuff is fair game. So definitely yeah. show off your interest. It's always fascinating to see that. Yes. And then right after that, ask an engineer. Right after 8 o'clock, full hour, Phil Lamar, talking about all the latest goings on in the maker community, as well as all the cool new projects coming out. Yeah, and course. the top secret stuff that Lamar's been working on. So definitely tune in. I don't want to miss that. More mechanical keys, I hope. Yeah. All right. So uh, that's... That's tonight. I hope to see you there. All but right. tomorrow we got more show. John Park's got his workshop. It happens every Thursday. I almost said Thursday. Every Thursday at 4 p.m. Watch too much Dr. Seuss. And then on Fridays you have Deep Dive with Scott, 2 p.m. Pacific time or 5 p.m. Eastern time. Yes, definitely tune in for all of the latest in the weeds of the Circuit Python development. Lamar stops by frequently, so definitely check that out. Yeah. I give a shout out to everybody hanging out in all of the chat rooms. Yay! Yay, we did it, everybody. All we had the issues and somehow we managed through it. Comments and the suggestions definitely make a difference in the projects that are released. Yeah. We'll do 180s if you guys think we should do something differently. So we'll definitely always accept your suggestions and comments. Thank you all for joining yeah. us every single week. I appreciate you putting orders in because it, it keeps all of us going. Here's a pre-COVID photo. Hopefully later this Soon. year we'll be able to meet with everybody. Again. I forgot to give my spiel during the 100 days of masking. We recently got our Pfizer shots on Saturday. It hurt yes. for like two days yeah. on the third day. like. Um, it would only hurt when I had my like hand like all the way up like this, yeah. and it's completely gone now. It was gone like at in the afternoon, so uh, definitely worth to feel somewhat protected. I'm still masking, oh, and yeah, social sure. distancing, even folks. after we're fully vaccinated. We're not out yet, we but there is light still. in the tunnel here. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, so definitely go schedule your vaccinations. If you can, uh, we're, yeah. we're going to need um, some uh, updated graphics from Bruce there on the. Um, yeah, the, this uh, would be a great one fight. for like I got my my uh, mm -hmm. I got my vaccine like yeah. right here <laughs> like here's where I got it. Yeah. That's like the same arm and everything. I love. <laughs> All right. Well, well, I think next thoughts. time I'm, I'm going to have to drive so they can get my left arm. <laughs> sure. Because uh, don't, right. don't get the shot in whatever handed you are. If you're right-handed, you'll get it in the right. <laughs> Tips from Pedro. <laughs> All right, folks, we'll see you tonight. But until then, remember to make a great day. See you later night, folks. Bye-bye.